We're going to take a little detour here to study curvilinear orthogonal coordinates. Coordinates are very, very important in general relativity, and it doesn't hurt to understand this at this level, the general idea of coordinates. So what I'm going to do here is show you an arbitrary, a curvy, curvy kind of a volume element where you have uh, three uh, coordinates uh, you can think of as a q1 q2 and q3 and the little h's are there because in general as you know from polar coordinates you have an r d theta for a little line element so we're going to let the h's represent those and your uh, arc length here ds if you square that, that's obtained by using the Pythagorean theorem by squaring each of these and adding them together. And the volume element, you would multiply length times width times height. So this is a nice general formula that will really help us understand coordinates in general. Let's look at a specific example. Here is cylindrical. With cylindrical coordinates, you have a dz for your height. That's from the Cartesian coordinates. That's the same idea. And here you have your polar coordinates, essentially, in the other two planes. You have what I call rho and then the d rho, the little differential element to extend it a little bit more. And then you have phi, and the rho d phi gives you uh, this little arc uh, length there. So if you want the volume of this little cube, you would take the d rho times the rho d phi times the d z. That's nice. If you want to uh, look at the uh, arc length squared, a diagonal here, you would square these and add them together using the Pythagorean theorem. So d rho squared plus rho squared d phi squared plus dz squared. Now the h's here can be identified for the uh, radial coordinate, since you simply have a d rho, that's simply 1. There's nothing in front of that. While when you have your phi, when you have the d phi, you have the rho in front. And for d z, you have a 1 in front. So these are your h uh, values. And with the h values, see, you could just plug in to this general formula and find what your ds squared is and what your d v is. So this is very powerful to be able to write these in general with the h's. And if you know your h's, you already have these two things accomplished. So we would like to go on and uh, consider spherical coordinates as another example. And here the coordinates are r uh, and phi and theta. And for your uh, r, you simply have a dr uh, as, as before. And then here you would have an, an r, an r d theta uh, would get you uh, this uh, side here. And this other side's a little tricky. If you project down here to the plane for this one here, project down to the plane, you have then this is basically r sine theta to get down here. And then when you wiggle your d phi, you get your little length there. So it's r sine theta d phi. So once you have that, you can multiply them all together and get your familiar r squared sine theta dr d theta d. Uh, phi. So here, what are the h's? Well, the h's would be uh, here for the first variable, which I'm going to call q1 as the r. Uh, that would simply be a 1, since you had uh, just dr, dr up here. And then for the second uh, variable, q2, the theta, uh, that has the r in front when you do your rd theta, see, to get your rd theta, uh, your little uh, length there that would be up uh, here r d theta see remember theta sweeps down in front of the z axis and then your last one for the phi that would be r sine theta r sine theta is the same as your rho and your rho down here see r sine theta when you uh, then hit that with d phi you get your little your little length so you have your h's and then using the formulas, see from the h's, you can go ahead and get your uh, formulas very, very easily for the arc length squared, your line element squared, and your volume element. What about the gradient? 
Well, look at this. Uh, here you have D, a dx, a dy, and a dz. And if you look at the formula which we derived in cylindrical coordinates earlier, this first coordinate, rho, is a d rho, and then the second coordinate had a phi, but it was a rho uh, with the, with the uh, d phi for your uh, little line elements. So in other words, your h's can help you get this uh, formula very, very quickly. If we look here, with the H's involved, then this gradient can be thought of, you see this one over R is like a guide there, one over R, your R uh, D uh, theta, this is H2 times you know, the uh, D uh, Q2. So here you replace basically in the denominator the H1 and a delta Q1 and H2 and a delta Q2 and H3 and delta Q3 and you have your general formula for the gradient. So if you know your H's you can just write this down and you don't have to go through any derivation. So here we're saying be careful if you take the F out and just want the operator which will operate on a scalar function. You want to be careful because these H's have um, dependency on, for example, you have r, theta, and phi in general. So what you want to do here is be careful that your derivative is at the far right so it doesn't work on these things because these things uh, are not in general a constant. Uh, they can vary, they vary as things go. So uh, that's um, the conclusion here. We're going to continue with our next lesson more with the curvilinear coordinates.